How do everybody? Welcome back. Today I am going to be doing another sculpture and we will be doing the creepy mushroom guy this time. He was a, uh, a fun drawing so he, I figured he'll, he'll make a fun sculpture and I've been watching lots of videos on how to do this kind of stuff so hopefully this one goes a little more smoothly than last time but I'm starting with a foil ball here and then uh, I'm gonna make a armature with some of this aluminum wire I guess the foil ball is considered the armature too uh, the whole thing is but yeah so I saw somebody doing this drill trick and I had to try it out it's a lot of fun I don't know how much time it'll save you but it's definitely fun so you know that was fun and then, yeah, here I'm twisting the wire around the ball. And then for the legs, I wanted it to be a little more stout. So I did the twisted wire. But for the arms, they're just kind of, you know, almost vestigial. They just dangle in there, little dangly boys. So, uh, you know, one piece of wire was probably good enough. It was a little wobbly. So I figured I'd kind of tie it on with this thinner aluminum wire just to, you know, make sure it wasn't flopping around while I was trying to sculpt and and whatnot. So, and then here, this was a little experimental. This was, I was trying to figure out how to kind of add feet, you know, because I was unsure of how to even do that or if it would work. So I just wanted to kind of add it on after the fact. And then, so yeah, I did, I twisted this wire on there and made some loops and it, yeah, it looks like it, worked pretty well um and then here's a uh, aluminum noodle i'm gonna twist around here and that's gonna create the uh the flange on the mushroom tip and uh i'm just making it a little bit more sturdy with by twisting some wire around it here and bam because it's gonna be his lips too is like mouth is part of the cap so we want that lower lip area to have like a little bit of you know sturdiness to it and then this stuff finally showed up in the mail it, it, the goop formerly known as bacon bond and i'm don't think it was strictly necessary for that part but i wanted to try it out so i brushed some on there and yeah it just uh you know helps the clay stick um it's probably more useful for, you know, attaching already sculpted stuff together and stuff like that. But then here I'm adding some sort of shape to his legs. It's kind of, oh, I saw somebody else doing this where they have the, the clay on their thumbnail like that and they scoop some off and it actually works really well um, for like smaller details and stuff. So, uh, and then here I'm just coming through and I was thinking about doing a smoother texture I made a straight uh, guitar string tool uh, I think it's called a rake I don't know and but I was just really digging this sort of the sculpting uh, marks the like the texture that you know it kind of had like a, a grain to it or something so I just left it like that I didn't bother trying to smooth everything out and then, yeah, that was the first bake just to set the legs so that I could, you know, hold on to those while I sculpted the rest. And then here I'm adding the underside um, for his gill, the gills underneath. And then here I'm making just a big sheet, a uh, big, trying to make it round. And uh, yeah, it looks like a silly hat and uh, just kind of, you know, popping that on his head. I'm making a big noodle for the, the rim there, wrapping her. That's going to be his lower lip and like the, the sort of, you know, rest of the flange around the outside edge. And then here I'm making some gums, just trying to tuck those in there. And I skip a lot, like skip through a lot of stuff here because it's not that interesting, but it was a lot of work to kind of you know, turn that into a nice, like, uniform dome shape that was very uneven and, 
yeah, I, I had to add a little, like a bunch of little chunks of clay in there. And you can see here I'm adding the another bit of rim around the edge and then kind of blending it in. And um, I think this whole, just the sculpting section, not the painting was, you know, seven or eight hours. So it's definitely a lot of uh, work that goes into these little five second clips here. But yeah, there I'm adding a little extension on the top of his head to kind of, I didn't want him to be so blunt. I wanted him to be like a little more pointy. So I just, you know, added some uh, foil on the top and then here I'm adding some gills underneath, just, you know, sculpting those in with this tool. Seems to work pretty well for that. And then here I am making the teeth. If you hear the snoring in the background, it's the dog. <laughs> it's not, I don't have breathing issues. He's a, he's a snoozy guy. But yeah, so I baked the teeth. I, next time I wouldn't cut them like that. Um, I think I would just kind of make them a long taper one way and then maybe a short taper the other way. Cause it's hard to line up the flat end back in the gums later because I had to pull the teeth out so I could paint behind it before putting the teeth back in. So I would do that a little bit differently. There's a couple things I would still do differently. Obviously, you know, it's, you're going to, it's always going to be a learning process process. So, you know, and then here I'm making a frill. This is another thing I would probably do differently. I made the entire frill and then kind of glued a noodle around. You'll see here, I, I put some goo on there and then Here's the noodle just to kind of make the frill stand out. And then I wrap the whole frill around. I think next time I would just do segments of frill, you know, like little, almost like those tooth shapes and then kind of like layer them in there to get like kind of a more of a clumpy texture. This was like a little too flat and smooth. It, it doesn't look bad or anything, but it's not really what I was going for. And here's some more of that goo. And then... I'm just wrapping some clay around to make his little nubby arms. And this, uh, this, the arms are pretty straightforward. It's just, you know, wrapping some clay around there and then getting in there with the sculpting tool. Um, they're almost like vestigial or something. I, I did add those little kind of like end grain sort of things into the ends there. And then here I'm just making some little uh, balls and I'm going to, squish you know, put some glue on here and then squish them on to make like the the bumps um i don't know what to call them they're just like his his the mushroom bumps <laughs> the the lumps i don't know anyways and then yeah uh, some just some alcohol isopropyl alcohol to take off the fingerprints and then we're on to painting here. So I have this, uh, I got some folk art paints. I, I, a lot of people use those, so I wanted to try them out. This is the linen, and then this is the, I don't know, I think it was coffee or something. It kind of looks like baby shit. Um, baby shit brown, and just for the underside there. And then this pink was kind of awful to work with. I think maybe I should have done like a layer of white first and then done pink over it. Um, this, I thought I was being really clever, but I would do it differently. This was poster tack and I'm just sticking the teeth down to it so I could paint them because they were hold, hard to hold on to. But what I should have done is put the poster tack on like a popsicle stick or something. And then that way I could hold it and manipulate it. Cause I don't think I got the back edges of the, the teeth painted very well. I ended up fixing it later, but, and then here's some, this is a, a red wash like a deep red wash and a black wash. And I'm just starting with the red to kind of bring out a lot of the details in the gums there. And then it got all over the place. So I figured I would just, you know, give it a coat of that linen color. Um, it's not really a big deal if the, the wash gets all over the place. Um, but yeah. And then this here is a glaze, right? So it's a little bit thicker but it's still thinned down pretty, pretty far. And I think that was more what I should have been doing the whole time with the red rather than trying to do a wash because the wash was just kind of running everywhere. And here I'm dry brushing a little bit of the pink back over it to bring out some of the highlights. And then here's the black. 
this is kind of like a pin wash, I guess, where I'm like being very like focused with it and like putting it into specific places. And this turned out pretty well. There's it, it kind of got a little out of control in a couple places. I think just because I was, you know, I'm so inexperienced with it, but it for the most part it worked really well. Um, I like being in control of the the wash, unless I'm trying to like give the whole thing like an antique vibe or something, I guess. But I don't know. I wasn't trying to do that here. So yeah, this is the bacon bond. You can bake the acrylic paint, but I had some issues. Uh, with some of the white on the top that off the linen color cracking um, it wasn't a big deal because I just ended up painting over it and then yeah once you um, once you bake it it turns clear so that's nice it is a little weird to paint over it here but I was just kind of there's a couple little spots that got like a wash on them or something that I wanted to just clean up or maybe it's the parts that I didn't paint very well I don't remember but um, and then this, this part, um, this is one of the things I would have done differently. I really like the way this black wash worked on the gills and the way it ends up looking here. And then I screw it all up by doing a bunch of dry brushing over top of it. And I think maybe just a little bit of dry brushing around the edge or just being more conservative with the dry brushing would have been a good idea. Um, but it doesn't end up looking terrible, but I really like the way it is now. And then I kind of overdo it <laughs> a little bit later. And then, yeah, here I'm, you know, doing a little bit of washing and glazing and dry brushing to give the, the frill sort of, I wanted it to kind of be that dark red color. And then, yeah, so here I'm going over the, the creamy linen color with that red wash to kind of give it like a. I don't know, like a muscly, skinless sort of look. I wanted it to, to kind of have this like kind of creepy look underneath. And then I'll be painting color over this, but I didn't know how much of it I wanted to kind of look gory or whatever. So I just kind of did the whole thing. And then um, I did this under, this is like an underpainting for the eyes here. Um, I don't know if it was strictly necessary. Yeah, and then here's where I do the, the dry brush and kind of go overboard with it. It doesn't look terrible, but it's it looked better before, I think. So anyways, a little bit of black pin wash just to add some more contrast in the gummy gums there. And yeah, and then I'm on to the sort of the color. This is a, this one's called Dutch Aqua. Uh, it's a really nice, like light kind of blue green color. And I'm just kind of mostly dry brushing it over everything because it's going to be um, kind of one of more kind of the underpainting for parts of, yeah um, under this color here and then yeah this I don't know what this one's called it doesn't have a label it showed up um, it's a one of the folk art colors it's like a turquoise or a teal or something um, but no label and then I'm coming back with the Dutch aqua and at first I was trying that kind of stippled look on the dots there, but then I decided I wanted to, uh, you know, smooth them out here and just give them a nice, um, nice clean edge, I think looked better. So I'm just going through and, you know, fixing up the, the ones that were kind of just like dabbed on there and yeah. And then, yeah, some more of this teal over the legs just to give it a, uh, you know, um, it's like a glaze or whatever to, to give it like a gradient down here. And I'm just like kind of thinning it out as I go along to kind of to, to get that gradient. And then a little bit of uh, dry brushing to bring out back out some of those details up here. I think maybe doing some dry brushing on the cap would have been a good idea, but that's, I decided to just kind of leave it there. I think it looks good. Anyways, before I show the glamour shots, a real quick thank you to my patrons on Patreon. If you're interested, there's a link in the description. And here's the uh, finished piece. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. So anyways, uh, let me know down in the comments what you think. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this kind of stuff, go ahead and like and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. All right, bye now.